Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. And these are the NEC changes for this specific topic. We're going to start with the 17 as our base into the 2020 and in the 2023. I have to recommend that you use these videos for educational purposes only. Be sure to pull permits on all wiring projects, working closely with your local electrical inspector to make sure that you have an NEC code compliant installation. I just want to see you guys win. And a part of us all winning is that we do all electrical work legally, morally, and ethically. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, let's get to it. So let's start in the 17, and we're going to learn about 406.12. Now, what I've done for today is I've listed the specified areas. They are in different order than in the code book, but we do cover everything. I've underlined all of the content that's new to that code cycle, new or altered. So in the 17, it looks like it's all new or altered. Let's start at the top here. It says all 15 and 20 amp, 125 through 250 volt that are non-locking type receptacles that are specified in these areas shall be listed tamper resistant. If you don't know what a tamper resistant receptacle is, those are the little shutters that are over the holes of the receptacle so a child or adult doesn't stick something metal in them while being grounded or or in the ground and the hot and the neutral at the same time and become shocked. Now, many of you have commented in the past on some of these videos that you were the child that actually went out and did this. So if that's you, if you'd be willing to comment again, it's always interesting to learn about these stories. Now, I've listed all the locations here. They are not in order, but let's go ahead and talk about them. The biggest driving change that I want to talk about that started in the 17 is that it's not 125 volt receptacles only anymore. It's also 250 volt receptacles. So if you are in one of these locations and you install something like a receptacle for a 240 volt heater, that would actually be required to be tamper resistant now. And in previous code cycles, it was not. It's also going to include places like child care facilities, preschools and elementary education facilities, business offices, corridors, waiting rooms, and the like in clinics and medical dental offices and outpatient facilities. Subsets of the areas that are described in 518.2, including places of waiting for transportation, gymnasiums, skating rinks, and auditoriums. And there's a whole nother laundry list in 518.2. I'm not sure if it was the code making panel intention to include that entire list. And I'll tell you why I think that later. But for now, it says a subset of those assemblies and then lists some of them. So you can work that out with your electrical inspector. And then guest rooms and guest suites of hotels and motels dormitories, which they kind of hatched out over a few code cycles, because when I think dormitory, I'm thinking college, but there's other dormitories like shelters and there are places where the uh, firemen and women stay, and those would also be considered dormitories. And then dwelling units in all areas that are specified in 210.52, which is going to be the laundry list of place of re uh, required receptacles and those that are listed in 550.13. Now, let's take a look at the 2020. All right, so the code section stayed the same. It's still 406.12. And they've added some locations. So they added on motels and their common areas. They changed it to dormitory units, which kind of broadened that. And then we have dwelling units, but also now it includes attached, garage, attached and detached garages, accessory buildings in uh, that are to the dwelling unit, common areas of multifamily dwelling units and those areas that are specified like before. And then it added on assisted living facilities. So we're not just wanting to get small children. We're also wanting to get elderly people or anyone who may be susceptible to this happening. Unfortunately, whether you love or hate tamper resistant receptacles, there is always there are always shocks and electrocutions that drive these code changes. So you know, I know it can seem very simple, you know, don't stick something in the outlet, but a lot of people have, and unfortunately, a lot of people have and lost their life and been shocked and electrocuted. So, you know, there are specific things that are driving these changes. Now, let's look at the most recent code, the 2023. 
All right, let's take a look at the 2023. They've left the code section the same, and it seems silly to put it at all three places, but a lot of the codes that we're going over, they're changing the actual code numbers. And in this one, they've ha happened to have left it the same, and I'm pretty pumped about that. Now let's look at all the new required places and look where this is really going and talk about some suggestions of how maybe we could simplify it. All right, so the added ones are residential care and assisted living facilities, social and substance abuse rehabilitation facilities and group homes, foster care facilities, nursing homes, psychiatric hospitals. They added the word within, business offices that are accessible to the general public, lobbies, waiting spaces, spaces in nursing homes, all dwelling units, boat houses, mobile homes, manufactured homes. And they added in areas of agriculture buildings accessible to the general public and common areas. Like I said, my list today is not in the exact order, although it's got the text covered. It's not in the exact order of the NEC. You can go in there and dig. 406 is a really short read. It's a really good read. There's a lot packed in there. It's all about receptacles. So this is the change from the 17 to the 23 for tamper resistant receptacles and whether we love them or hate them they're not going anywhere thankfully they're getting easier to use all the time and I do think it is a great added safety feature with that being said I think we could uh, clear up a lot of real estate in the code book and just go ahead and say that they're required everywhere Looking at this from an installer standpoint, I only carry tamper resistant receptacles on the truck. And there's really twofold reasons. One, they're needed almost everywhere that I need them. And for two, if I do get out on a service call and the only thing I have on my truck is a non tamper resistant receptacle, then I'm in a moral dilemma, right? So it's like it's not worth the little bit of extra cost. Receptacles are expensive nowadays anyways. It's just not worth the little bit of added cost for me to carry only tamper resistant, but that's something that you've got to work out with. So I am the electrical code coach and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you and you will in turn add value to others. I'm here to help you in any way that I can in life or business. And listen, I know that it's hard out there right now and there's a lot of crazy things going on, but no matter what happens in technology or in the industry, we're always going to have the need for highly skilled electricians. Now we're going to need to become more and more skilled to stand out in the marketplace, but there's always always going to be a need for it regardless of what happens. So I encourage you keep pushing, get that license, get those certifications, get them now, push hard and level up and you'll shine like a star in the industry. If you're an inspector or some other some other trade or a homeowner listening to this, I want to encourage you that you can keep pushing and leveling up in your life and career as well. If there's anything I can do to help you in life or business, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.